welcome back to Simsation Nation. Today I'm taking over. My name is Letitia Sims, the wife of Henry L. Sims Jr., aka Simsation, aka Shooter, aka My Boo Bear, aka Dad to Our Kids, aka new author of it takes heart yeah i like how that sounds i like how that sounds welcome welcome to my home studio <laughs> <laughs> how you doing today babe? i am well it is a little different being on the opposite side of the <laughs> interview questions but i am well and you have taken over and i like the takeover Yes. And guys, I came prepared. I got my questions. I got my Gail and Oprah on. I am ready to go. Let's How about go. you? You Let's ready? Let's get ready. Always ready. Let's, Let's put them in the hot seat. Uh -oh. So you just recently re released a book. It takes heart. That's right. And what I want to know for the people, these questions are for the people. For the peoples. Why in the world did you choose to write a book? Oh, wow. Okay. So good question. Um, I found myself honestly telling stories over and over again um there were scenarios that were across my path and i would be like i got a story for that i've been through that let me tell you a story about me and i found myself just repeatedly saying those things and i told myself at some form or fashion in some form or fashion i needed to probably put them and write them down so i could just start saying hey Go read chapter blah, paragraph blah. I think that might help you. So basically, people, you can't talk to him no more. He, <laughs> he just going to refer y'all to the book. <laughs> nah, nah. So you basically, this is a way to capture all of the stories that you found yourself right. remembering for other people to give them advice and knowledge. That's exactly right. And honestly, it helps me too. It's a good memory jogger. It took me down memory lane and it helped me actually look back at some of the things I've been able to overcome as well. Yeah. A lot of people say that writing is very therapeutic. Very. It was very therapeutic. Um, just as much as I hope it's a, a, that I hope it helps everyone else. Uh, I will tell you, it, even if no one reads it, it helped me uh, from, for just for simply writing it. Well, people are reading it and they want to know more about it. So one of the first things they probably want to know is why this heart <laughs> on the front? You got it takes heart sure. and then you have this pulsating heart with all these veins as a graphic design sure what is it that's pounding in your book that mm. is the central message that reflects a heart yeah very very good question uh, i will tell you before i got to that point that was not the original title of the book i went through various titles <laughs> and there was one that i was stuck on uh and i had to let that one go and uh, in particular, um, it was called Don't Think Outside the Box, you know, pack it up and move. And I had to finally let that go. And honestly, I was really trying to build the shell of an airplane without even having the interworkings of the airplane itself. So I started with a title and didn't really have the content. And I just kind of let that go. And ultimately, when I started thinking about what I wanted to write about, I just thought about all the things that I have gone through. And it came to me just as plain as day one day. And it said, it really takes heart to overcome blah, blah, blah. And from there, I said, heart, it takes heart. I like that. And then I started thinking through the letters, and it didn't take me long at all. And I was like, man, the H can stand for this, and the E can stand for that. And it just went on, so on and so forth. The image itself that's on the front took me a little while to come up with the image. Um, but I will tell you, if you look at it very closely, it is not your standard heart. Most hearts don't look that way. Um, hearts have a certain amount of valves chambers so on and so forth the heart on that book does not look that way the reason being is because everyone's journey when we talk about you know what each letter stands for everyone's journey is different everyone's heart is different yeah so so basically you chose heart because it just came to you after reflecting on your stories and also just to relay the pounding of everyone else's life and every everyone doesn't beat to the same drum I like basically that. Yep, everyone it. don't beat to the everyone same does drum. not beat to the same drum so you just elaborate or alluded to the fact that heart is an acronym sure. and that each letter stands for something can you share with us what those letters mean yeah absolutely i tried to figure out the the interworkings of what it takes to it, be successful to achieve success and as i walked that through and i felt that everything no matter what the h of course is the beginning of heart and it just so happens that the thing that i believe you have to start with in life to be successful is hard work that's where the h came from um, as you go along you have the e which is education uh, the a is adaptability because sometimes we have to bob and weave and just go with the changes of life uh, sometimes life is going to knock you on your butt 
and you have to be able to, you know, just keep moving, you know. So we've got the hard work, the education, the A for adaptability, the R for resilience. So when you get knocked on your butt, you can get back up again. And then it had to, had to think about what it ends with uh, because time is fleeting and it ends with time. It takes time to get things done. It doesn't happen overnight. And uh, as you'll see if, if you read the book, sometimes it also depends on the perfect timing as well. Okay, so hard work, education, adaptability, resiliency, and time. That's right. All right, so that is the heart. That's the heart. Of your book. That's the heart of my book. I see All what right. you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> I get extra pay. <laughs> All right. In the hard work chapter, you say you can remain handcuffed to a negative situation or you can use your hands to work hard to remove obstacles that hinder your success. Mm. Can you elaborate on that statement? That's very good. Um, as I think about that, I feel that we have a choice in life. Um, some choices are harder than others, and we have to decide which direction we want to go. Do we want to go left or do we want to go right? Um, traveling through the, the narrow gate, the narrow path is not easy. And sometimes we have to do that. And I feel like we have to take our hands and we have to decide if we want to actually just grab down on something, put in the hard work, or do we just want to throw our hands up and surrender it and say, this is just the scenario I'm in. This is how our things are going to be. Um, I think that left or right is really symbolic of how you use your hands. We all have the same amount of time in a day, 24 hours in a day. Well, what are you doing with them? Are you going to use your hands for good? Or are you going to use your hands to just sit there idly? Are you working hard or are you hardly working? All right. I like that. Oh. <laughs> In the education chapter, you discuss your struggle with academics during your time at mm -hmm. OTS. Right. You talked about how you <clears throat> focus more on being in a performance-based mindset than your academics. You made your academics inferior to the things that you were doing. Mm -hmm. And you even coined this phrase, the B monster, because <laughs> of the grade you made, which put you on probation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, school has just reconvened, and there's so many students out there that are struggling between performance and academics, mm -hmm. whether they're in sports and they might be like, I want to be this basketball player, mm -hmm. uh, but I need the grades to do so. Or whether it's just real life scenarios of I need this part time job so I can fend for myself mm -hmm. and my family and I still need that education piece as well. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to them to help? Because ultimately in the book, if you guys read it, you'll see that you had to learn to put academics first. What That's advice right. could you give to someone else to learn how to put their academics first? Yeah, I will say in order to do something, you have to know and understand how to do it first. Sometimes, again, I keep referencing the plane, but sometimes we're trying to build the plane as we fly it. Well, if we were to take the time to learn how to build the plane, it'll probably fly the way it's supposed to fly. Um, I think I mentioned this at one point in the book, but you have to take your time. And if you measure twice, you only have to cut once. And so if you're smart enough of that, you take that education and focus on what you need to do, because that is what is going to be to carry you to the next level. If you're out there and you're doing some kind of physical activity that relies on your, your skill, well, those skills may wane at some point one day. Um, but ultimately, that knowledge, that's something that someone can't take away from you. Someone can potentially take away a specific skill that you may have or something that you're good at when you're young and you're not as good at when you get older. But that knowledge, the knowledge is going to always be the foundation and it'll always be there. The flip side of that, though, I want to say is there's no such thing as perfection. I think that's why mm. I called it a B monster, because that can haunt some people trying to be perfect mm -hmm. it just feels like a monster just always sitting underneath your bed and if it catches you you feel like it's the end of your world you have to understand that there's no such thing as perfection we can strive to be as best the best that we can but you will never reach the level of perfection so sometimes when you're trying to get perfect everything perfect grades you have to understand what failure feels like in order to understand and how to enjoy those successes so when i tell people out there today that are listening Focus on your education, but don't put so much pressure on yourself to the point where it hinders you from learning the next thing. Learn from the B. Learn from the C. Okay, well, that's an area I need to improve on. But don't let it get you down so bad that you don't ever get an A again. Oh, I like that. I like that. And that's coming from somebody who was not education first, guys. That's right. You know? That's right. Um, 
in the adaptability chapter, you discuss not being the shut up and color type of leader. <laughs> well, I want to ask you, are there any times that a leader should just shut up and color? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, from a coming from a type A personality like myself, uh, even doing this podcast right now, being on the opposite end of you, <laughs> I'm learning to shut up and kind of listen and talk when I'm supposed to talk. Usually I'm the one initiating conversation, initiating the questions. So even during this process right here, I'm actually learning. Uh, to answer your question, I would say the answer is yes. Um, I consider myself to not be a shut up and color type of leader, meaning whatever someone tells me to do the first time, I'm just going to do it. To me, that's following blindly. That's, sh that's a shut up and color type of person. That's not what I strive to be. However, there are times where you have to be quiet so that you can actually hear and know how to respond properly to get things done. So there will be times where you may have to be silent and color but not necessarily shut up in color. I think those are two different things. Shutting up means I'm never gonna talk about it again. Remaining silent means I'm gonna pause, listen, reflect, and then respond. So I think there's a difference between those two things. Yeah, but even like you said, in this situation right here, which is not a bad one, you just had to reverse the roles. That's right. And so I think sometimes we have to learn how to not always be the chiefs in there the situations, like right? right. Um, because sometimes that can cause an issue in any organization and even in marriages. Mm -hmm. um, people need to know, like, she's better at this or he's better at this. It's time for me to shut up and color because right. she know how to cook. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, uh, I will say uh, if you if you were to research it, I think our ears are designed to hear twice as much as what people are able to speak. We can hear twice as much than that. We can speak in a minute. And so, we, we, again, as people say, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. You know, so sometimes you do have to just pause, be quiet for a little bit and then get the coloring done. Yeah. And even in the Bible, as you brought that up, um, it talks about um, in the chapters of Proverbs, it talks about wisdom. And it also um, on the opposite end of it, it talks about being a fool. Mm -hmm. And it says a fool will not listen before answering. Mm -hmm. So it's always important to listen before you pre present an answer. Absolutely. And I think some of us are just so ready to say what we want to say without truly listening. And when I say that, I'm also saying, let it go in your ear and digest it, not just in your ear and speak. That's right. <laughs> right. That's right. All right. So in the adaptability chapter as well, there's this lovely diagram that you often use at your promotions or other other things. Mm -hmm. And if you guys get the book, you will see that diagram in <laughs> there. And it's first presented as a triangle and it has all of your ranks at the bottom are your enlisted ranks. And then it goes up to the officer rank that you now have. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on the next page, you invert that mm, right. and you say that the E is your find foundation mm -hmm. on one of them. And then you say the E funnels into my O, which is the officer style. That's right. When did you realize, because a lot of people just think about climbing the ladder, climbing the ladder, <laughs> climbing the ladder, and we forget everything else. We sure. just looking up, 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 sure. right? That's right? When did you realize to look back? on that enlisted as your foundation? Yeah, no, very good question. Uh, I'll be honest, um, it wasn't very long ago. Uh, I would say probably within a, a year or two. I never forgot about it. Uh, you never forget your, mm -hmm. your past, right? Um, you never forget when you look back in the rearview mirror how far you've come. Sometimes we focus on how far, on where we are, and we forget how far we've come. And we're so focused on where we're trying to go, we forget how far we've come. You know, I originally created that diagram a very long time ago, and it was, you know, the, the pyramid style or the triangle style. And it showed my current rank as an officer at the top and all of the other things at the bottom. And I was very adamant, like, hey, enlist is my foundation. I'll never forget that. And I was trying to articulate that on every in every opportunity I had to show, hey, that's my foundation. It keeps my house strong. And I still believe that because with anything, you have to have a strong foundation before you can even start thinking about yeah. building your rooftop, you know. Um, but it was about a year ago where I decided I was looking at that thing and I said, I, I need to actually invert it. I didn't want it to replace what I had already done because the enlisted side in my past is my foundation. But at the same time, even where I am today, I've got people that are those ranks, those enlisted ranks that I once wore that are still pouring into me, pouring knowledge into me, giving me information because 
we can wear a certain thing on our uniform, we can wear a certain title in the civilian world, but at the same time, you still have people that are developing you. You you can always learn, you can always grow. So I ended up, as you mentioned, I inverted it and I, I kind of made it an inverted triangle and it looks like a funnel and it shows all the enlister ranks that I had that have funneled into me to make me who I am today. So I think basically reflecting on both sides of those, it really kind of balances me out pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, a lot of people say, like you said, don't look back, you know, uh, move forward just to keep going. But what we have to also realize is sometimes the looking back is what fills up our gas tank to keep going forward. And those experiences as an enlisted member um, oftentimes bring good memories and bring back mm. the reasons why you chose to continue forward. Right. So, you know, either way it works, right? right. It works for you and it can work for you in your life Absolutely. too, guys. That's right. Um, so moving on to the resiliency chapter, one of your subheadings is, and we're going to talk more about these subheadings <laughs> in a minute. One of your subheadings is not what people call you is what you answer to. Mm. Well, you, my friend, my husband have so <laughs> many names and some of the names you've been called have been great, sure. but some not so good sure. to be honest. And you guys will see when you read, but one in particular name has stuck with you. And that is sensation. Mm. Do you feel worthy of that name? Mm. Um, short answer. Yes, I do. Um, I have always believed that if you have to say you're it, you're not it. Um, that has been the foundation and the premise that I have carried me with me. Um, the fact that I did not give myself that name makes me feel worthy of it. The fact that my peers, my friends, my superior peers, subordinates have called me that name. Uh, I play on sen- sensational, uh, which turned to sensational with a part of my name, I feel like I am worthy of it because it was given to me by people that mean the most to me. And the best part of that for me is the fact that I don't necessarily have to always uh, go around saying I am sensational, so to speak. It becomes a a lifestyle and it helps to actually motivate me too. And it kind of ties into one of my favorite quotes by Aristotle. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And so I made a habit to try to be the best that I can be to do sensational things um, and in turn to try to be as sensational as I can every day. And I hope that it becomes really just a lifestyle for people to kind of emulate. Yeah. And so you mentioned you did not give yourself that name. Who gave you that name? Uh, Ironically enough, um, I think it was one of my commanders at the time combined with one of my coworkers, I believe Stephen Joyce, who always nicknamed people all the time. And it just started from a uh, sensational job or a sensation, sensation, you're simtastic. And sim, it went, it went viral for a while where in my local little circle. And uh, I just took it with me and it carried with me everywhere I go. So the, the great majority of the people that know me, they know me as, as sensation. And they go, who's this shooter person? And, you know, there's a great deal of people that know me as shooter. And they're like, sensation? I know, I know, where did that come oh, from? Like <laughs> yeah. I, will, I will tell you, I, I came with that name to an organization at one point in time. And um, he said, what do they call you? I said, they called me sensation. He's like, I'm not calling you that. And so from then, it was a renaming pretty much every chance that that person got. So. Yeah, but Simsation has definitely, as you guys know, become a brand, not only for Henry, but also our family. And Mm -hmm. um, you'll learn more about that as you read in that resiliency chapter. Another thing that I want to talk about, and it gets pretty serious here. Mm -hmm. um, In one of the resiliency chapter sections, you talk about a very tragic life experience and you are not one to share right. information as such. So not many of your peers or anyone who was not like really in your inner sure. circle did not know this information. That's right. Now that you've put it out there for the world to see in sure. print, how do you feel? Um, I'll just say this, um, you know, with something that happened in our lives, which you'll read uh, in the book, uh, there's been times where I would meet somebody and within the first hour, I would share uh, a very personal story. There's been times where I've worked with people for years and people still would never know 
uh, unless they read this book now. So I am uh, kind of a private person, and usually I don't share things unless a voice speaks to me or God tells me, share this with this person right now because it's going to help them. And that's why it ends up being where I can meet someone in the first five minutes and tell them and work with somebody for five years and don't. Um, because it was really a focus on, I don't know if it's the time. I don't know if it's ready. You know, I don't want to make that person feel a certain type of way, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. How do I feel right now? To be honest, quite frank, I feel relieved um, for people to see all of me um, because, you know, they, they say you should not hide your scars. Um, you should not go around really telling everybody every sad thing that's happened to you either. Um, but you shouldn't hide your scars because that doesn't really benefit anyone. Um, if you see someone with a broken arm, the first thing you do is go, how did you break your arm? Well, I was doing X, Y, and Z. And then you may go, ah, I may not want to do that. I may want to avoid that. So when you share some of your scars that are not much seen, um, it can actually help someone else as well who might have had a similar situation or might be able to avoid a similar situation. So short answer to your question is I feel better. I feel relieved. I feel a, a weight lifted off the shoulders. Uh, and there will be some people that will probably be reading some things for the first time going, I worked with him for years and never knew. Well, now you do. Yeah. Yeah. Now you do. Um, let's move on to the last chapter. Well, it's not necessarily the last chapter, but the last part of the heart acronym, which is time. Mm -hmm. This time chapter takes on a totally <laughs> different style than the rest of the book. Why mm. is that? <laughs> Why? That's funny. That is funny <laughs> to me. So time, time is of the essence, right? A lot of people don't have a lot of time of it. Some of you are taking time right now to even watch this, um, writing that book took time. It took a long time, longer than probably what it would for most, but it was the perfect timing for me. So time, the time chapter is very short. I got to the end of that book and I said, you know what? I don't know how much more I have to say. And so I have a whole lot of things that I could talk about that would probably be good enough for another book. But I said, there's a whole lot of life lessons and quotes and things like that, that I could probably add into this time chapter without making it long and drawn, long and drawn out. And so you'll see because time is of the essence, time is money, time is valuable. Time is going to be one of the shortest chapters in the book. And so what I did was I dropped a bunch of uh, nuggets of information, knowledge in there, and it's not as long and drawn out as the rest of them, but it's symbolic to show, hey, you've been reading this book for X amount of time. It's time to get this book done and move on to the next thing. All right. So you just kind of hinted to that this one, the chapter time, focuses on like nuggets instead of stories right. like the other sections right. um so if i forgot to mention so you get uh, a chapter and the chapter has a subheading which has a story and then there's another subheading with another story and then at the very end of the chapter you'll get sensational thoughts and so in the time chapter there's like maybe a small little story in there and then it goes right into timely sensational thoughts and it's always like little brief statements mm -hmm. of those timely sensational thoughts which one would you want me to walk away with <laughs> since time is of the essence? <laughs> this is good. This is when I used to watch people sing songs. I'm like, how do you not know the song? You wrote it when people were on there. <laughs> and uh, this is this is good. It's a good test for me. I will say the one that jumps out the, uh, the most for me is treat every first down like a touchdown and every free throw like a game winning three pointer because it will all count in the end. Mm. Um, what I what I came up with that it was really me thinking about the times where I felt like I didn't achieve X, Y, or Z in the time or with the timing that was designed for me instead of focusing on God's timing. I was focusing on my time. I was like, well, I didn't get that A. I got a B. The B monster came and got me or I didn't get that job when I wanted to, so on and so forth. I was beginning to celebrate the the small things small victories the small victories which in turn would lead to greater victories down mm -hmm. the road and sometimes that did not resonate with me until after the fact and so i was like man if i didn't do that one job that i didn't like doing i wouldn't be able to do this mm -hmm. job as well as i'm doing it right now so i like that one the most um because it does resonate with me the most um so i will say it helps me going forward when I achieve a small victory or small success, a small win, to celebrate that, even though it may not necessarily be the Super Bowl or the World Series or something like that. So create 
Uh, think of every first down as a touchdown, mm -hmm. every free throw as That's the game-winning three-pointer. Three That's right. All right. And it will all count in the end. It will all count in the end. And right. so all of those nuggets mixed with so much more you're going to find in this book, It Takes Heart, by my wonderful husband, Henry L. Sims, Jr. <laughs> so I just talked about the subheadings, right? Sure. Some of these subheadings, y'all. <laughs> Please finish reading. Please don't just read the subheading and be like, girl, he did this or he got this. For oh, instance, God. the time I caught Clep. <laughs> Chasing the wrong pee. Yeah. Chocolate fever. Mm -hmm. Tiger hoods. <laughs> The way that, the way that you're, I'm you're just, the way that you're covering them right now, and I'm like, man, that does kind of sound good. Well, well, I'm just saying, That's there's good. many subheadings yeah. in this book, clickbait, and you have to go and read it. Please don't stop <laughs> and be like, I'm gonna have to call his wife. What, what, what? You the, know, the time but, I caught the clip. No but friend. anyway, if you had to make one subheading mm -hmm. about your life as it stands right now. Mm. What would it be? Oh, wow. That's a good one. One the subheading about my life as it stands right now. Um, I would say traveled a very long journey thus far, but still a long journey to go. That one's not as fun, but <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> traveled a long journey thus far, but still a long journey to go. That's right. Okay. All right. It sounds like you're in a sentimental mood. <laughs> All right. Um, I would like to share with you the very first review of your book mm. by a young lady named Tarika. I hope I'm saying this right. I've read many inspirational books, but this one hit differently. I was, it was amazing to read the story of a young man who grew up in a small town with, town with me eager family income, develop into the highest ranking member in his hometown. This book touched my heart from the forward, and I haven't been the same since I finished the book. Henry L. Sims Jr. is not a name that one would find in a national museum or a history book, but it should be. One can clearly see the pro profound impact that he's made around the world. A young black boy from the poorest town in Georgia realizes his potential and turns the mentorship he received from others into a full career of many personal achievements, along with motivation for enlisted and commissioned military members. He humbly shares his honest story of true grit, determination, and love for his family and community. If you want to know how to push forward in your career with a broken heart, dealing with oppression from your leaders, or simply fighting the uphill battle for organizational change, you must read this. I devoured this book because I could relate to, to much of the author's personal story. I will definitely read it several more times just for the extra push whenever self-doubt or imposter syndrome rears its ugly head. Wow. How does it make you feel to hear how it takes heart is affecting other people? It's surreal, to be honest with you. Um, it's like hearing someone read your bio when you're about to go do a public uh, speaking event. And you're behind the curtain and you're going, who, who are they talking about? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little surreal. Um, and after having read the book myself as a reader, not as a writer or editor, re-editor, so on and so forth, um, I read the book and I, I took myself out of it as best I could. And I said, I looked at it to pretend I didn't even know who the book was about. And it made me want to applaud a little bit, um, not necessarily um, in a boastful way, but it's almost like when you're rooting for their underdog in a movie and you're just hoping like, man, I hope they win. And then you see those times where they do, you just want to jump up and like, yeah, yeah, you know, one of those kind of things. So um, everything that I do, and I think that you would concur, everything that we do, um, it feels good because we do those things for the purpose of helping others. And sometimes you have to share your story. You have to share your journey in order to do that. Uh, as you and I have talked about on many occasions, uh, some of the best ideas are in the cemetery and they're doing no one any good. And so to hear some of those comments 
I would say it's not necessarily confirmation, but it's really affirmation that, that you're doing the work that God asked you to do. Yeah. And I think, I think it would be confirmation. You're doing the work that God asked you to do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's how you do it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this could not be a Simsation nation broadcast without a speed round. So are you ready? Oh my God. Are you really hitting me with my own thing here? Let's speed round. Let me, and let me, let me, let me take a drink of my apple juice. Yeah, Loosen up. You scared of me? My blazer threatens you. You got me huh? sweating in here, man. <laughs> my blazer threatens you. Oh, sorry, babe. So this speed round is about your book only. Okay. I will allow you to elaborate slightly, but not like full sentences. Okay. All right. All right. right. Y'all ready for the speed round of It Takes Heart? I'm not. Let's go. (laughs) Hard copy or Kindle? Hard copy. No. You can get it in a Kindle or hard copy. (laughs) Fiction or nonfiction? (laughs) Nonfiction. Yes, this is a memoir of his very life stories his experiences successes and failures hard read or easy read easy read well it depends on who you are that's true if you don't read it might be hard i don't know (laughs) that's very true um for military or civilians both there you go you got it you figured it out (laughs) this book is for everybody and anybody you could get this for your young man that's in high school who doesn't know where he wants to go on his journey you could also get it for the young daughter you can give it to somebody who's starting their military career you can give it to somebody who's out of their military career it is for one and all that's right um serious or comical (laughs) Both. <laughs> both. Why are you laughing? Now I'm going to say both to everything you say. <laughs> but I will say, yeah, definitely both. Um, as, you, as you'll see uh, from the very beginning all the way through the end, you'll see there's some times where you'll chuckle, some times where you'll see some serious moments in there, read some serious moments. Yeah. There. And as he shared with me, sometimes people are laughing about stuff he didn't know they would <laughs> laugh like, about. I didn't mean for that to be funny. Or I didn't mean for them to be sad on that part, you know? Yeah. And so that's the art. Of, that's the beauty of the art of it, right? Very much so. All right. And number six, this is my last of the speed round. Okay. Describe in 10 words of le- or less, describe in 10 words or less why someone should read your book. Mm. 10 words or less why someone should read my book. Um, to be sure they find the motivation through someone else's example. It takes heart, y'all. I hope that was 10 words or less. I don't know. I went down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of the book and why people should read it, where can they find your book? Oh, my gosh. Um, very good question. Uh, my book right now is on Amazon. Uh, as mentioned, it is on uh, Kindle for those that like electronic books. Um, it is uh, available via paperback. I know I've been uh, telling people hard copy. When I mean hard copy, it's just a physical a book, hard not hard book, uh, not hard cover. Um, so you can get a paperback version through Amazon. Um, you can get the Kindle version through Amazon. Um, when you search, it takes heart. You may have to do the H period, E period, so on and so forth. But Henry L. Sims Jr. is out there, and I appreciate you all support. Yeah, and we'll put the link down in the notes so you guys can go right to the link and go straight to the book now what if i'm one of those people who want to get a signed copy of Mm. the book how can i get a (laughs) sign well i know how i can get a signed copy (laughs) i'm I'm gonna get a copy bought for me and signed (laughs) that's right 100 (laughs) percent um which I, i need to mention uh that that clay that you sit see sitting behind me or the pottery that in that book you see sitting behind me uh it started out as a as a piece of clay and uh it could not have been done without the the hands and the works of my wife as well for being a key editor with this book along with Bob Vasquez. So uh, I just want to say thank you for helping me to shape that that mold of clay into the book that it has become. Uh, so I really, really appreciate that. Now, to your question, what was it? Checks in the mail for my editing. Checks in the mail uh, for editing. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, but sign, sign copy <laughs> where can book. I get a signed copy? I'll be honest with you. Uh, I didn't plan for that as much. Uh, it has been overwhelming in a positive way. The amount of requests that I've had for people asking, could they get a signed version? The reason I, I am not uh, so wasn't expecting it because I'm not pretentious that way to think that even anyone would even want me to sign something. But it has been very overwhelming. I will say the options are 
go ahead and buy your book um, in the hopes that I cross paths with you yeah. at some point one of these days. I know that's less likely for some of you, more likely for others. Um, if I ever do book signings or be able to travel and do some things, I will put that out there and let everyone else know. But I would say don't wait uh, for me um, to hopefully get a signed copy before you buy it. I would appreciate it if you bought it just to go ahead and really uh, get your understanding of it and, and learn from it. Uh, other option, if you want to send me a private message through any of my social media platforms, um, uh, email or whatever it may be in the back of the book, you'll see that I have a different ways to contact me. Um, send me a private message. Uh, maybe we can get that book to me um, and I can get it back to you and uh, maybe talk about shipping and, and things of that sort as well. Right. I, I am expecting a, a bulk of books to come in. Uh, I'm just waiting for that to come and maybe have another option as well. Yeah. Yeah. So for now, people, it's more important to him that you just get the book, you read it and you get all of the sensational <laughs> thoughts, all of the knowledge through his experience, his adversities, his winnings, his losses. That's right. All of that is wrapped right up into this book. And so, you know, just get out there, get it, go to Amazon. The link will be below. And one day. It'll be even more precious if he can meet you and That's just right. get it signed, right? Thank you to those that have bought it already. I, yes, I want to make sure yes. I say that. I have had several people say they have already purchased it. Several people read it in a day, uh, and I've gotten some great feedback. So thank you all to, to those that have already purchased the book. Yeah. Well, before I let you off the hot seat, is there anything that I did not ask of you that you would like to further share about the sentiments regarding It Takes Heart? Um, last thing I think I do want to leave with the people, um, the book is the example that's being utilized, um, through this recording. Um, but the book can be symbolic for whatever it is that you want to achieve, whatever it is that you want to accomplish or complete. Um, <clears throat> this is something that I, if someone would have told me you're going to have a book one day, I would have been like, no, not really. <laughs> no way. Um, I will say literally anything you set your mind to anything you put your heart into you literally can do it. And if I can do it, trust me, so can you. So if it is your book that you need to manifest, if it is that 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 job you need to do or whatever it is, uh, you can do it. Just take one step at a time and get it done. All right. So that's it for Sensation Nation today. <laughs> I'm out. Very good. <laughs>